What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're going in depth on Carolina rigging. Summer worm fishing. I got some big worms to show you guys. Got some tips, some tricks on Carolina rigging. This summertime, doesn't matter if you're a reservoir fisherman or ledge fisherman, today's video, we're gonna cover all of it. Let's go. If you guys have been following along this summertime, you know that Matt and I recently were out uh, in the Midwest, out down in Tennessee fishing uh, Chickamauga, doing some ledge fishing, and recently I did a summer worm video, a big worm video, and uh, I am back home now. So got out to my garage and I wanted to show you guys some of this stuff that I mentioned. You know, in that video I mentioned giant worms. This is a 19 inch worm and believe it or not, bass eat these things. I mean, look at this thing. Here is a, here's a 12 and a half inch old monster. Look at, look at the size of that. Anyways, we're not going to talk about these today, but we are going to talk about uh, big worms, creature baits, Carolina rigs, and why you should be throwing them this summertime. So again, that big worm, big worm video I did, I don't know, maybe two weeks or so ago, covered a lot of different techniques, magnum shaky heads, Texas rigs, and I said that I would do an in-depth Carolina rig video, so today is gonna be that video. Before we dive into it, lots and lots of comments about um, leaving out the, the power worm. Big power worms and the man's jelly worm. So just so you guys know, I do throw those. If you guys watched previous worm videos, summer worm fishing videos, you know that I included those. Those are staples in uh, my big worm lineup, but the, those other ones, those new ones that I talked about, you know, the mighty worm, the bull worm, that sort of, those sort of plastics, I've also incorporated. So we do it all, but uh, wanted to give a shout out and some love to the, the power worm and the man's jelly worm because those are staples in big worm fishing. So, Carolina rig, why you should be throwing it. And, and for those of you guys that don't know what a Carolina rig, you know we talk about the Alabama rig, the Texas rig. A Carolina rig is simply a line, a main line with a weight tied to some kind of swivel or attachment that allows you to have a leader line to your bait. Now what makes this so so special what makes it so good and in my opinion get more bites than a Texas rig is gonna be your weight is not directly connected to your worm so on this Magnum shaky head I'll let this helicopter go by real quick never fails Surprise someone's not mowing their lawn or weed eating or training their dog with a shot collar or something. Anyways, Clear Lake, just so you guys know, Bassmaster Magazine just ranked Clear Lake in California, the number one lake for the last decade and uh, pretty cool. Definitely blessed to be able to, to call this place home and uh, be able to fish it for the last several years. Um, so thanks to Bassmaster for that. But uh, getting back to the worm fishing. so. This Magnum shaky head, this is the bull worm on here. When I hop this, when I fire this out and let it hit bottom, every, every rod twitch I do, every, every movement I give this head, give my rod, it moves the worm instantly because it's connected, it's, it's one piece. The Carolina rig, I can throw a one ounce tungsten weight to a Magnum sized worm but my weight's down on the bottom, moves. It's a sliding sinker. My giant worm is down there, free floating, free moving. It doesn't have any weight, using a, a somewhat of a lighter wire hook. It doesn't have any weight really affecting the action of the worm. So now I can fish depths that I normally would fish, have to use a big shaky head or a big Texas rig. I can use a half ounce, three quarter, one ounce weight to fish down getting all tangled up, <laughs> down in that 15, 20, 30 foot range, but I get the action and the movement of 
a weightless worm. So that's what makes a Carolina rig so special. And when you're fishing summertime, it's hot, a lot of tournaments are going on, a lot of pressured fish. Um, when you could put something that is more natural, more realistic in front of those fish, you're gonna get more bites. That is why a Carolina rig shines compared to some of the other techniques. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So I'm gonna go through the rig and then we'll talk baits, talk about how to rig it just for the beginners. You know, this applies to kayak fishermen, pond fishermen, bank fishermen, river fishermen, reservoir fishing. It doesn't matter what you're fishing. A Carolina rig can be applied to your fishing. So to start it off, I will run you through my setup and then I will give you guys some tips for some beginner stuff and uh, some little tweaks that you guys can do uh, for your fishery and how you're fishing. You don't always have to throw magnum worms, but when I'm throwing a Carolina rig, just like when I'm throwing a swim bait, I'm going for bigger bites and that's why I try and throw the bigger worms. Not necessarily this big, <laughs> these things blow my mind. The first time I saw worms like this, I was down, I don't know, this might've been 12, 15 years ago. Uh, my buddy Wes and I, we towed from California out to Falcon, back when Falcon was in its prime. And I went to a, a tackle shop down there in Zapata, Texas. And the worms, I mean, some of those worms were, I mean, I won't say twice as big as this, but definitely another 50% another bigger and just giant. And I, it just blew my mind that, you know, a two pound bass will try and eat that. You guys know that how uh, aggressive bass are, but um, anyway, so the rig. So a little tip that I like to do, I like to run, you guys know I like to run braid to leader. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'll try and focus it. So this is a sliding, sliding sinker. Now, the reason that I rig it like this, I actually have I'll do some zoom up stuff on here. I actually have a bobber stop. And just like every video guys, I'll link all the, the gear down below in the video description. I run a bobber stop on my main line, about six to eight inches nice, uh, to my connection knot, but I'll actually run another bobber stop just before my connection knot. Now, the reason I do that, when you are casting a Carolina rig. It is very hard to be accurate because when you go to lean back and launch that thing, if you don't have a bobber stop or something to stop this weight from going up, it, that weight will go all the way up three, four, five feet up your rod tip and hit your rod tip. Or It's just really hard to be accurate. So I run the bobber stop. Now the reason that I don't run it completely tight, slide this down for you. The reason that I don't sandwich it between these and keep it tight, another little tip for you. When this is down on, you know, down on the bottom, you're dragging it. Fish comes up, nibble, 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 sucks in, eats the bait. Always give, if you're fishing big worms, I know I'm kind of going sideways, but always give them a little bit of time to eat eat the bait. As soon as you feel that bite, give it a second or two before you set the hook because it's a lot of worm for them to get. So you feel the bite or they start sucking on it, they start tasting it. If you have this connected, if you have this sandwiched down, you're gonna, they're gonna feel that three quarter ounce weight, that one ounce weight, they're gonna feel that resistance on this worm before you do. But if you give it a little bit, you know, give it eight inches, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be down there on bottom. They're gonna eat this worm and they're gonna start pulling it. Well, that weight is gonna slide up the line, oh, sorry, slide up that line for the good six to eight inches before that pressure gets there. So it gives them that time to eat that worm without feeling the resistance, the unnatural weight of that one ounce tungsten weight. So that's why I rig it like that. So bobber stop at the top, that makes it easier for casting, keeps your, your weight kind of managed. <laughs> As you can see, uh, Carolina rig with all the the leader line and on the knots and all that stuff. It's just a little bit to manage, but it is well worth it because you'll catch a lot of fish. So, and then I run a bobber stop just before my connection knot. And that is simply so that when this, when I'm casting this weight sliding back and forth, I don't want it banging into my knot and weakening my knot. So I run braid, a lot more sensitivity, a lot more strength to a Spro 
power swivel. Again, I will link all of this down below. Then I go with a monofilament leader. Now you might wonder why not, excuse me, not fluorocarbon. I want this worm to float as much as possible. Monofilament kind of floats in the water, fluorocarbon sinks. Again, I want this worm down there as natural as possible, as weightless as possible. So that's why I run a mono leader, typically between a foot long and four feet, uh, four foot leader, depending on the water clarity. You know, out there on Chickamauga, the, you're, you're in that, you're on that river system, the, the Tennessee River system, and the water's not that clear. You can get away with a shorter leader, makes it easier to manage for casting, uh, and, and it just Anytime you have a shorter leader, it's easier to manage. But if you're if you're fishing super clear water, gin, gin clear water, that is where you can go with fluorocarbon. You can go with a fluorocarbon main line, and uh, you finesse fishermen. Everything on here can be scaled down. Instead of throwing a one ounce tungsten, throw an eighth ounce tungsten. Throw a, a, a quarter ounce tungsten to six pound leader to a six inch worm. Everything that I'm talking about today can be applied. Doesn't matter if you're throwing on a spinning rod or a broomstick, anything in between, you can apply this, just adjust your gear accordingly, your line, your weight, your worm hook, worm size. So, monofilament leader, it's gonna have a little bit more stretch to a little more give, a little more abrasion resistance, but most importantly, it's gonna give that worm a little bit more flotation, uh, so it's not just smashed down there, glued to the bottom. Uh, again, in that last video, I covered uh, hopping baits versus dragging baits, Carolina rig is usually a dragging technique. That's why I typically go with either a ribbon tail worm or a creature bait. Get into that in a little bit. But monofilament line. Now this this hook right here, this is actually a uh, 11 aught. Yeah, 11 aught owner right there. The reason you want a long shank worm like this, if you had a little three aught hook on here just in the head of the bait. This bass is going to come up and they're going to eat this worm. When you go to set the hook, the chance that they get the hook in the mouth is going to be a lot less with a smaller worm, uh, smaller hook. So that's why I go with that 11 aught. It's not a giant hook, it's just longer. 11 aught worm hook to take up a lot more section of that worm to make sure that that bass gets that hook in the roof of the mouth. And then my favorite plastics, like I said, a ribbon tail worm, a creature bait, uh, we'll go into that in just a second, but that is a Carolina rig. Now it doesn't matter if you're a finesse fisherman fishing 30 foot viz for smallmouth, or you're a spotted bass fisherman doing the same, or a bank fisherman fishing a pond. Adjust your gear, adjust your setup accordingly, and it will work for you. A Carolina rig is a great technique. It's often an overlooked technique, but it will put a lot of fish in the boat. Now, talked a little bit about the, the bobber stops. I typically run a tungsten weight. Those of you guys that follow our channel know that tungsten is more dense than lead. Uh, it is also more expensive, but you get a lot more sensitivity. So when you're dragging that, that big worm down in 25, 30 foot of water, and that big 12, 13 pounder comes up and just engulfs that worm, and you just feel that tick of her closing her mouth, you're gonna have more sensitivity transferred through tungsten than you will with lead but it is expensive. If you're, if you're fishing a rocky area or a ledge with a lot of current, break with a lot of current where you're getting hung up constantly, go with your cheap egg, you know, your lead egg sinkers. You can get these like a two pack for like a buck or something. Those are one ounce. There you go, you can see the difference. So those are the sinkers, one with the peg, the peg stops, the line, the hooks. I will link some different hooks down in, uh, below in the video description uh, in case you just wanted to go with a normal three-aught or four-aught hook with a 10-inch worm. It doesn't always have to be the magnum stuff. One other thing I, I want to mention because I feel like it needs to be mentioned at least, I mean it has to be in a Carolina rig video, is brass and glass. If you don't want to go with your lead sinker or a tungsten weight, if you've heard the term brass and glass, what that is, that is a brass weight and then down here in front of your connection knot to your swivel, you run a uh, glass bead. And what that does, that adds extra, extra sound to your overall package. So brass and glass, it's gonna be a brass weight 
and a glass bead right here. So instead of having that bobber stop, you're gonna have a glass bead and it just gives that extra sound to get those fish uh, to commit. But that is how I rig it. Again, you can apply that to your spinning rods, to your finesse fishing, just downsize your gear. Now, kind of touched on it, where this shines is gonna be deeper water, but you get that weightless presentation. So it doesn't matter, like I said, if you're fishing a reservoir, a river system, um, island tops or humps out on uh, main bodies or main lake points, uh, firing out there and fishing a weightless big worm in depths that you typically would need to go with a big, uh, a big weight connected to the worm. So that is where a Carolina rig really, really shines. Now, let's talk baits. So I mentioned it a little bit, but in my last worm video, sorry guys, it's hot, I got sweat dripping in my eyes, um, summertime. This is the time right now where you should be out on the water fishing deep. As the, as the wa as water warms up, air temps get hot, those fish, they get pressured and they want to be in cool water so they go deep. So again, your ledges, your, your humps, rock piles, main lake points, out in deeper water, that's where you're gonna target these fish. Doesn't matter, you know, shaky head, any of that stuff, that's where you're gonna target these fish. So, all right, baits. So like I said, in that last video that I did on big worms, I talked about a lot of straight tailed worms. Now, I mentioned hopping baits and dragging baits. I want my worm to have a lot of action without me having to give my, my rod and uh, bait action. I, I'm gonna be dragging. I'm gonna keep good bottom contact with this weight down there. The worm is gonna be up off the bottom and I want this tail moving around. If, if I'm just drifting, you know, if I'm out on the lake, it's windy and I'm just drifting a, a high spot, I'm bringing that worm across. I'm not shaking the rod a bunch. I'm not doing a lot with the rod. I'm just dragging, but this big ribbon tail is gonna be down there moving. It's gonna give action to the worm that typically a straight tail worm wouldn't have, you know, this net bait T-Mac, phenomenal worm, phenomenal shaky head worm. But you can see with this tail, not much is gonna give it action unless I am shaking it, shaking the rod or giving it the action. So this worm is gonna be down there, getting action, doing movement without me having to do anything. And I'm just gonna be watching that rod. I'm gonna be watching that tip, waiting for a little extra load, waiting for that tick. I feel that tick, give them a second, kind of reel up the slack, lift, feel the weight, reel down and jack them. But that is why I like the ribbon tail worm. Another phenomenal bait is gonna be some kind of lizard or creature bait. With all these extra appendages, same thing. This bait's gonna be down there dragging. Now you can see this isn't, tear these things apart real quick. Always remember to tear your appendages off of your bait, separate them so they get that action. But you can see these, these tentacles down here, as I'm dragging the bottom, this is gonna be dancing like a, a crayfish, crawdad. Um, but big creature baits, big lizards, those are two of my favorite styles of baits. Again, I will link my favorite baits down below in the video description. Colors, I usually keep it very, very simple. I'll go with some kind of natural color, green pumpkin, black flake. Definitely a June bug. You cannot go wrong with some kind of a June bug color or black and blue. Um, Bam across, something like that. Kentucky special, uh, something that's natural, has a little bit of black or, or June bug in it. But another great bait, if you don't wanna go with the giant 12 inch worms, some 10 inch worms, uh, this is the B2 worm by Big Bite Bait. I might have covered that in that recent video. Again, it's just a scaled down version. A lot smaller than the Zoom, the old monster. Again, this is a 12 and a half inch worm. This is a 10 and a half inch worm, but even the, the size uh, of the worm, it's not as, um, it's just not as big. So you're gonna get more bites with the smaller worm. The old monster does come in a 10 and a half and the 12 and a half. But if you guys are finesse fishing and you want a great worm, um, what's it called? The dead ringer is a phenomenal bait. It's a, it's a ribbed bait with a ribbon tail. That's a, that's a go-to. And then the seven inch power worm. You could throw a seven inch power worm, smaller than this, the seven inch on a spinning rod and it's lights out. Um, so baits, 
Like I said, I typically go with a ribbon, t uh, ribbon tail worm. If you guys want to, you can get away with throwing a trick bait, a trick worm style bait. A little bit more, you know, buoyancy. It's gonna float a little bit. It does have a little bit of a bulbous tail on it, so you're gonna get a little bit of action on there. Um, but take your favorite soft plastics, your favorite bait that you like to throw on a shaky head or wacky rig and rig it up on a Carolina rig and I think you will be impressed. As far as gear, now this is very important only because when you see, when you have a leader this long and you got to make a cast, it's the farthest you can reel this bait up is that first, get this out of here, is that first bobber stop. Let me drop it down just so you can see. So you can see there's a lot of extra line dangling. This is where a longer rod really comes into play. Now you guys have heard us preach about this rod in the past. This is actually the Dobbins 784. So it's a seven foot eight, so seven foot eight inch rod, four power, so heavy action. This rod is super versatile and one of my favorites to throw an Alabama rig on as well as a Carolina rig. It's got a really nice tip. It's a great jig rod, great shaky head rod, but with that extra length, that seven foot eight inch, I can reel this bait up to where I need to cast. With that longer rod, it allows me to easier manage my cast with the longer Carolina rig leader. So if I'm fishing clear water, that I'm gonna go with a longer leader and that longer rod really, really helps with managing my cast with accuracy and just overall managing the longer leader. So that seven foot eight, you can get away with a seven foot four. I mean, you can get away with your normal worm rod, but let me tell you the, the longer rods help uh, not only for deflection, for, for um, sensing that bite, watching that rod tip, that longer rod tip, just watching it load helps with that but it also helps with casting accuracy and managing uh, that longer leadage. So definitely important to go with a longer rod, a seven foot six, seven foot eight, even an eight foot, but I will link um, the rod down below in the video description. But there it is guys, that is the Carolina rig and why you should be throwing it. Again, baits, we kind of talked about them, creature baits, I'll link all of that stuff down below in the video description. I'll link the gear you need to get started. Even if you wanna try this out, go get yourself some half ounce lead egg sinkers, some leader line, and your favorite soft plastic, and uh, you guys will be good to go. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. As always guys, Matt and I will try and get to those as soon as possible. We've been, we've been running and gunning, going all over the country and fishing and filming, so a lot of it, we've been in areas where we don't have uh, internet or Wi-Fi, and, uh, but it's, it's been a blast. So as always guys, we appreciate you. If you learned something from this video or you have uh, from this channel, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Uh, Strictly Teaching, just helping you guys catch more fish and put them in the boat. As always guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.